Hello everybody. So in this video we're going to go over painting resolution and what it means at least from what I've picked up and understand from the things I've read. I'm going to kind of try to explain it the best I can to make it to where simpler for everybody else to understand. So for this video I'm going to use model color. I want to focus dark version blue. Doesn't want to focus for some reason, but that's fine. And that's going to be my darkest color. I'm going to use model color, sky blue. And that's going to be my light color. Now, if you've seen Power Rangers uh, video, I kind of try to explain to him how I do some stuff, and um, he wasn't too sure what I was talking about. So I'm going to go over that a little bit too. So resolution, you can think of it as kind of like your monitor or an old Nintendo like the old Nintendo and arcade games. You know, they, they had pixels and each pixelation or, or a bit was a certain was a certain um, how should I put it? Well, your pixels are uh, I'm not sure LCDs are still that same kind of shape but um, kind of square or squarish with kind of points at the end kind of like a crystal shard in a way. I'm not sure how the LCDs run anymore. Uh, let's see if I can get a close look and tell. Mm, not really, but that's besides the point. Basically the more pixels or more bits, the more colors you can put in the small amount of area which allows you to have a smoother transition. A smoother transition when something moves also allows for you to have a sharper image that's why you know 1080p and all that stuff is super duper I really don't see too much of a difference after 720 to 1080 but I mean I know there is a difference especially in um, the fluidity of something moving across your screen but to me it's not a huge difference so for purposes I have a 720 camera now that I can use at the desk Unfortunately, I can't take it somewhere else with me, so eventually I will buy a camera that I can pick up and move around with me, but that's uh, going to be probably something far and few, so sorry, you're going to have to put up with my A, my cell phone, or B, the um, little blue RCA camera cheapy thingy. So, keeping that in mind, when you're talking about paint and your resolution, um, resolution is how something looks. So we have our dark to our light. So if we wanted to make this not our base but our darkest shadow, like that's the darkest you want your blue to be on that miniature, and this is the brightest you want your blue, and you want that to be your final highlight. Now I have these separated so they're a little bit easier to tell against each other, but if you look here you can see how harsh. So we could say this would be a very low resolution because when you're close it looks like crap when you pull away it, it's not quite so harsh maybe not quite so bad but it's not gonna it's not gonna look good now on a miniature this is obviously gonna be a lot smaller I've done this on purpose to um, emphasize and you see ones here because that's just one part of that paint there's no other paint, so there's no number to the side on this one. These are just the two straight colors on the paper, as you can see it. So, the resolution in painting is how close you can get to said model before you start seeing the gradient of the paint from one level of color it's the next. Now, if you use cell washing, 
Um, yeah. If you use cell washing, you, you kind of end up with something that kind of looks like this. Uh, I did lay layer a little bit and I didn't mark it off on this one. Sorry, I do the darkest to the brightest from here. So I put the darkest color here. I have a little bit of an overlap. And then I have a little bit of overlap of the highest color. And I really wasn't trying to be exactly the same size. And in the middle is the base color. And so for a cell wash, that's not going to get you a very high resolution. Uh, it's going to fall apart as you get closer and closer to the miniature. Uh, it's probably going to look really good from a foot away, two feet away. But when you start getting in close, half a foot, to four inches, you know, right up on it, you're, you're going to be able to see, you know, that you went from here to here to here. Where when that miniature is on that table way back there, it's not going to seem so harsh. Now, like I said, I'm emphasizing this by making these into big blocks. Now, if you go and you do a little bit more, here's one part, which is just the straight dark. Then I have three parts of my dark to one of my highlight. Then a 50-50. Then I have one dark. Come on, focus again. One dark to three white. Or three of my hard light. No, I did one to one. I could have done two to two. So it's the same thing. It's 50 50, one to one, 50 50, two to two. It's the same percentage. And then one. Now, as you can see, the transition from one, and I did the overlapping, like with Lake Lejeune. On the last one, I definitely marked where the top of like say this color is to here and then where this color is I marked here and so on and so forth so that you can see better where the paint overlaps um, because the transition it, it, on, the, on the next one I'm going to show is much more uh, gradual than this and I did mess up and I left it just because I wanted to show you know if you mess up it's not a huge catastrophic catastrophic uh, you know what I'm looking for. My mouth isn't going to say it. Now also to note, I did not go from here and paint all the way up here and then keep moving the other colors like you would normally would on your miniature. So you, you would normally paint your darkest all over the miniature. Then you would take this color and you would paint over but leave some of this and then you'd keep doing that until you get to the smallest. I did not do that. So it's going to be a little bit more skewed than what it would be when you put it on your miniature. Now this is where I'm at. I'm trying to avoid using inks and washes. Now they do have a place, they do have their place, and they do have um, great results. I'm trying to stay away from using them to become a better painter. Uh, my main ultimate goal is at some point, and I'm not looking to be a golden demon winner. So don't if that popped in your head, it'd be nice. But um, I'm doing this more of a hobby for myself. And I'd like to get myself to a professional paint job just for myself because I've always liked painting. I've always watched uh, Bob Ross as a child growing up, and I really love this stuff. So I, I want to go beyond a tabletop painting. So this is what I'm doing here now uh, on my miniatures. I start with my darkest color I want on the miniature in the darkest recesses, and then I build, 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 and then find a highlight. Now this is going to give you a better resolution on your miniature and the further away it goes the less stark the transition is from one color to the other. Like I said, I'm emphasizing this with these big blocky things and not having the dark color underneath all of it and building up and up and up and up. So you're not going to get a true look out of this as you would on your miniature. Now for the last one, and this is going to be a very large one, I did 10 parts. And how did I do 10 parts? Well, as you can probably see down here, I have these Dixie cups. Now I used my palette here for the straight colors and the half and half. I did make one half and half cup. And if you can see the rim, 5 to 5, 50 50, 1 to 1. All the same thing, same percentage. Let's see, paint in here. 
So what I did was I, I knew I had the full shadow, which is on the palette. Then I did nine to one. I wrote it on the top of the Dixie cup. Now you can get these Dixie cups cheap at the store. Make up what you're gonna need. Mix it. Then you'd go to your eight to two. Write it in the top. Mix it. And, and the reason doing this is so in case you had to go back to a cup when it was still wet, you would um, be able to find it easily enough. And you'd not be like, oh, was this my six to two or was this my seven to three? So six to four. You already seen the 50 50, but we'll show it again. 4 to 6, which I believe is the one I messed up. Yeah, 4 to 6 I messed up. It's actually now a 3 to 7. Um, I wasn't paying attention. And if you notice, some of these paints are, or these last couple of these paints are going to be wet because I have just finished this before filming. And now you see the left number is getting smaller because the left number I use as my shadow uh, number. And my main reason behind all that is I do my shadow first and I build up to my highlight. That's just the way I like to do it. If you like to do highlight to shadow, well, you could do highlight to shadow with the same number system, but you just have to realize that your number on your left is your actual highlight and not your shadow. So every time you see a number I post, on my left is always going to be my shadow, and the number to the right is always going to be my highlight, because that's why that's the direction I'm working. Now, on this piece of paper, you're going to see I put a line here, which is the bottom of the pure black, or pure dark blue. I'm sorry, and here is the top of that box. And if you see, there's a little bit of overlap with the next color on it. And I did that all the way up. And that's this is the ten part system. So you basically, you can say this is just ten drops of this blue mixed up and painted on. But I didn't do ten drops. No point when it's just one straight color. No, I did do ten drops for all these paints. So I did nine of the shadow and I did one of my highlight color. Mixed it up, painted it on. Eight to two, seven to three, six to four, one to one, um, five to seven. 3 to 7 because I messed up. Now if you look at the messed up area, which is right here in this box, to, to the others, it, it's not that bad. It's not that out of place. It, you know, it, so as long as you try to keep the ratio exact, I mean, I and I wasn't paying attention to what I did, what I was doing, not what I was doing, and I ended up putting 7 drops of the dark shadow in. I was like, oh shit. So I just put another drop of my highlight in trying to keep it uh, together in the, in the same amounts of paint. So, yeah, it's, it's not exact. It's a different percentage, slightly, but it, it works. So, if you make a mistake, it's not catastrophic. And then you go away to your, to your max shadow. Now, let's see if I can get this all into one closer shot. Ooh, come on, light. Work with me. So, dark blue, just sky blue, and like the, these colors here are still slightly, they're not full, fully dry on this paper. This is just construction, white construction paper. Just to keep that into mind. To make a good angle here, so you can get a better look at all these paint colors. If you see the transition, isn't so bad. It's not quite so starish. And of course now you get light traveling through the paper. But that, that actually probably looks better. It's closer to the actual colors that are on this paper than the single. So I'm going to leave it at the single. So you're probably looking and going, yeah, that's not so bad, but it ain't great looking. Now remember, you're putting this on a miniature. This is not going to look so bad. And if you're, if you're still doing cell wash, you know, which is an artistic style, which you've seen probably some movies in, uh, one of them with, um, not Johnny Depp, Keanu Reeves, whole movie done that way. Ugh. And uh, this would be much better than a two or three color or four, you know, four part uh, system. Now, as you drag this color back, 
if you if you notice these colors blend a whole lot closer together on a small miniature doing these many parts to one thing somebody's going to have to get really close and I'm not blending at all on any of this so if you're doing you know the start color and you head it all the way to the end of this and then the next color and all the way to the end of this and, and, and the same thing you know you know so if this was all dark blue at first obviously you left some you left some, you left some, and it's building. Boom, 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 boom. Final highlight. Obviously, a final highlight wouldn't be that big unless it's a big flat surface at the, at the very top. But you get you get the idea. Like I said, I try to accentuate my point. So the, the transition would actually be a lot smoother than what you're seeing here, because uh, I, I, like I said, I did this on purpose uh, to just emphasize. Now. I'm not an end all to say all on this topic. You know, wet blending of these colors together. You know, take your time, make these thin paints so they go on smoothly, uh, so that the other color goes through, shines through. I only did three layers of each paint um, progression on all these pieces of paper, but since it's paper and it soaks up the paint and so on and so forth, it's not gonna. It doesn't act the same way as it will with your miniature that you have nicely primed so also take that into consideration as well now if you like the video please put like uh, click the little like button uh, if you want to leave a comment please leave a comment yeah, like I say you know, input as long as it's good input is good input um, is always helpful always desired I am still a new painter, but I'm willing and wanting to share any type of information I can get as I make my pursuit towards at least some type of a professional paint level. I, I have a very long way to go, but uh, this is what I've noticed: is the you know the more you mix, you know the different percentages you put will make a huge difference on that resolution from one point to the other paint. And how close somebody has to get before they can start to tell where there, there's a difference between here to here, you know, that somewhere, you know, you had actually used a different paint. And if you do a good enough professional paint job, no matter how close they're going to get, um, they're just not going to be able to tell. They're not going to see where, where one paint ended and the other one started. It's just going to look like a perfect wet blend without even having a wet blend. Uh, but wet blending is a good tool to have in your arsenal, so don't ignore wet blending. Um, if you know more about this subject or you'd like to add some input, please put some put something down in the description as well. Uh, if you want to be able to come back to this video at some later point, you know, add it to your favorites. Uh, just because it's in your favorites doesn't mean it has to be your favorite. Uh, I, I put some stuff in my favorites that. I want to come back to later and look at again and instead of trying to figure out who had it especially now that I have a good amount of subscri uh, subscriptions uh, because if somebody who subscribes to me makes quality videos that I find are helpful or I like you know somebody who's making videos I subscribe to them as a courtesy for subscribing to me automatically so if you have subscribed to me and you are now starting to put up videos please let me know because I don't always go back and check all my subscribers, that would take me forever. And that's become a courtesy, I will subscribe to your videos, and when they come up, I'll watch them as well, and I'll try to leave any input. Uh, if you ever see me uh, put any input in your channel or somebody else's, I I'm not trying to bash you. If I leave a comment, uh, I try to leave uh, criticism uh, that's helpful, uh, if something I don't like the look of, or you know, I might suggest something different, and um, you know, I might send it to you in a personal message as uh, War Boss Tay. Uh, I, I've seen some stuff that I wasn't. I was like, eh, you know, I think you could do a better job, and you know, I, I sent him a personal message, and I and I linked him some information that I had come across personally that I really liked that information that was something that I'm implementing into my paint style and how I do things, and you know he gave me some good feedback on that and, and that's what I'd like to do for other people as well so if I come off harsh please realize that you know in text uh, you don't always come out the way you want 
I, I try to keep that in mind when I read text messages, um, especially from my ex-wife. But when I try to read, when I mean read messages from you guys, I try to give the benefit of the doubt. Uh, if it seems kind of harsh that you're trying not to be harsh, that uh, it's being lost in transition or translation. So I hope this video is helpful. And if it is, please uh, leave a message as well. All right, everybody, have a good night and happy war gaming. Be prepared to see more videos coming from me soon. I've been very busy with the holidays. They're now over, pretty much. So more content coming out, more painting going on.